Sometimes there is also a barrier of uh, language, communication between the sciences. But in all my collaborations, I have been able to figure out a way to find the common language with which we can discuss things. He's one of the world's top up-and-coming mathematicians working in numerical methods, applying his expertise to a wide range of real-world problems, including rock slide tsunamis and atmospheric waves. And I'm delighted now to be joined by this year's ICM 2019 Collapse Prize winner, Professor Sid Mishra. Sid, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Tell us to, to start with, what first got you interested in numerical methods? Originally, I intended to be a physicist, and then I realized pretty soon that in order to do anything useful in physics, you have to learn mathematics. And in order to solve any physics problems that arise in physics, you have to do actual computations on computers. And that's stemmed from there stemmed my interest in numerical mathematics. And how did your interest develop? It started during my PhD when I was trying to solve some problems analytically. And pretty soon I realized the limitations of just trying to use pen and paper, you have to use algorithms on a computer, and then one has to start doing numerical mathematics. And how did that lead you to avalanches and rock slides? And when I've been living in Switzerland, rock slides are a very important part of the mix there in terms of the environmental hazards. So I got talking to people who work at the avalanche center in Davos, and then they needed my expertise to solve some of their problems, and that's how you collaborate. So what are the challenges that you face and mm -hmm. some of the opportunities that you, you have? Sometimes the challenge could be that the problem that you're trying to solve is very difficult, right? And it uh, requires concentration, it requires patience, it requires ingenuity, new ideas. Sometimes there is also a barrier of uh, language, communication between the sciences. It's less between a physicist and a mathematician or an engineer and a mathematician. But if you want to work with a biologist, sometimes language can be a barrier. But in all my collaborations, I have been able to figure out a way to find the common language with which we can discuss things. And, and as we said, you're looking at real world problems. What kind of impact do you think your work is having on those problems? Some of the work that we do is very fundamental. And uh, to see its impact requires a long time. Mathematics has very long time scales. So, in a time scale of a few years, probably 10 years, I'm sure it will have even wider impact than what it has today. And is that what drives you? Is it, is it the impact of your work? Is it just the maths or is it a combination of them both? I think what drives me is uh, curiosity, the interest in solving a problem, in finding interesting answers to difficult questions. If it has impact, great. If it doesn't have impact, <laughs> life goes on. The sort of problems we're interested in have wide-ranging applications from astrophysics to climate science to oceanography to aerospace engineering to the design of aircraft. So there is a very broad spectrum that, uh, that is potentially able to use the work that I do. So is it a new frontier? Uh, I would say so. It depends. Others should say that, right? Uh, I would say so. I think these are some or interesting ways to look at old questions, but yet unsolved questions. Well, many congratulations for winning the Collapse Prize this year. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.